If you don't remember the Kevin Costner movie Waterworld, then don't beat yourself up, because pretty much no one does. It was set in the year 2500 when the ice caps had melted, all land was underwater, and mankind lived on floating platforms filled with bad acting. It's a horrifying notion that's now quite possibly on its way to becoming true. Faced with rising sea levels, South Korea is shunning the idea of seawalls or drainage systems and instead building a floating metropolis that could eventually house up to 100,000 people. With buildings and platforms tethered to the seabed, construction is about to start on the $200 million floating city that'll rise up and down with changing sea levels. But how will it actually work? What will it be like to live on? Will Kevin Costner be the president? And is this really what the future of our cities could look like? Our cities have a problem. Sea levels are rising and billions of people are simply working, driving, walking or living too close to the water. In fact, 40% of the world's population live within 100 kilometers of a coastline, but many of the buildings they're in weren't built with climate change in mind. Now, cities are being forced to adapt. What once felt optional or a nice to have is being approached with an increasing sense of panic. Rotterdam has built a movable flood barrier, Venice has invested in its controversial Mose system, Copenhagen is building an island, Jakarta is constructing a massive seawall, there's even been a plan to make Manhattan Island bigger. But all those projects are trying to throw every bit of concrete, steel and engineering expertise that we've got at holding back the ocean, and unless you're Moana, that's hard work. Turning things on their head, tech company Oceanix has a much bolder idea to embrace the sea. Introducing the Self-Sustaining Floating City, a futuristic development that claims to be natural disaster proof. The concept was first floated back in 2019 as a UN Habitat-backed project in collaboration with architecture firms Bjark Ingels Group and Samu. But it quickly became more than just an idea. In 2021, Busan in South Korea made waves by signing on as the host city for the very first prototype. Now, it's fair to say Busan kind of has quite a strong motive for doing this. The place is home to 3.4 million people, it's one of the busiest port cities in the world, and it's expected to be partly underwater by 2030. You know, the ideas of creating a sea walls or raising the, the, the height of the structure so the water goes underneath, you know, again, you can do it, but at the same time you're still dealing with water. And water is unpredictable and it's, uh, you know, basically dealing with mother nature. So our idea is to don't fight it, it's just actually, uh, you know, uh, welcome it. And therefore, having a floating system allows you to really adapt to the way the water level rises because you have a floating system, a floating platform, and uh, the only thing you guarantee is basically that um, the platform don't move naturally. Oceanix Busan is going to be made up of three platforms spread out over 15 and a half acres, and their hexagonal shape is considered efficient for building. It saves space and material like a honeycomb. Each platform, or neighborhood as they'll be known, will be solar powered and serve a specific purpose. One for living, another for lodging, and the last one for research. Busan today is already home to several local engineers and workers with experience of building on the water. Another factor that makes it a good place for the trial. But hang on, let's rewind a bit and get back to some basics. We know what you're thinking. A city sounds big and heavy, so how does it flow? So it's a platform that is uh, composed by um, basically a concrete caisson. And as a concrete caisson, basically it's a empty hole that allows also to use the space for storage. And uh, as a vessel, basically uh, due to the buoyancy, to the inherent buoyancy of, of a structure of the of that type, you basically be able to float on, on, on the water. Those caissons will be tethered to the sea floor with enough slack to rise and fall with varying sea levels, while ensuring they stay in the same area of ocean so that your friends, family and Amazon parcels can still find you. The floating city aims to be entirely self-sustaining, with a bit of help from its residents. They'll collect and treat wastewater for things like showering and hand washing, while a communal farming system will see people grow their own produce. There are even plans to cultivate seafood like oysters and mussels from underwater gardens around the city. When it comes to getting around, you can forget about gas-powered cars. They'll only be electric vehicles. Citizens will largely walk or bike across bridges between platforms. If Waterworld in real life weren't groundbreaking enough, one of the idea's most interesting features actually sits deep beneath it. 
and it's all about helping to minimise the impact of a tethered floating city on the marine environment. It's called BioRock. You have a metal rod with the electricity that runs through it, and it's able to basically consolidate the minerals that are in the water, in the seawater, and it creates a limestone, which is basically um, a rock. And that is um, a good way to basically have a substrate for coral uh, reef growth and redevelopment and regeneration. And because of um, the electricity, which we believe allows it to increase uh, the uh, absorption of nutrients from these plants, the salt marsh and the seaweeds can actually grow five times faster than where they are on, uh, on their natural environment. So that means that we can basically um, expedite, let's say, the habitat regeneration. And in expediting it, we're able to basically then, uh, you know, unplug the electricity and uh, the new marine environment will be able to survive and sustain itself. With 570 coastal cities thought to be at risk from rising sea levels by 2050, Busan is jumping in the deep end and starting construction in 2023. The new city's initial population will start at 12,000, but there's hopes to expand that by adding more platforms. Eventually, it could be home to 100,000 people. Now, the idea of floating cities isn't entirely new, and Oceanix won't be the only company designing them in the coming years. In fact, Saudi Arabia recently announced plans for a floating city on the Red Sea, and the Maldives has big ideas for its survival too. But Oceanix Busan claims to be the world's first prototype for a sustainable floating community. And the plans don't stop in South Korea. If this prototype proves successful, floating cities could pop up around the world and more people could soon be calling it a way of life. In fact, Oceanix is currently in talks with 10 other governments for potential developments. While you may already be advancing plans to buy a house for your ex or in-laws on a platform in the mid-Atlantic, bear in mind that these new spaces aren't just for living on. Matteo believes we could use them to free up higher quality space that we need here on land. We don't make any more land, that's just what it is, right? So uh, because of that, the idea is how we can relocate on floating facilities, on floating platforms, uh, those facilities that are not needed actually on land. I mean, I give an example of data centers. There are so many data centers on land that we actually can put on the water, floating. We can use uh, uh, natural resources, such as uh, energy coming from the wave or from the sun, and the cooling system coming from the water directly as a sustainable system to actually uh, you know, uh, operate these, uh, these facilities. I'm not trying to go and live in the middle of the, the Atlantic Ocean, uh, <laughs> like uh, <laughs> away from everybody, that's not my point. If this all comes off, then by the year 3000, Busted could almost be proven right. Not much will have changed, but we'll be living on top of the water. If you enjoyed this video and you want to learn more about where construction is heading, make sure you're subscribed to Tomorrow's Build.